Right now, ladies and gentlemen, let's bring him in. He's been waiting pins and needles to give us this exciting <laughs> forecast. Good morning, Pat. Yeah, not too exciting. A <laughs> uh, little drizzle left over. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, there could be a shower. Clouds 55 to 60, so at least mild today. Uh, cloudy tonight, 40. Cloudy and windy tomorrow. Showers and a thunderstorm in the mid-50s. And then behind the cold front, variably cloudy and windy. Some showers on Friday. We're in the mid-50s again. And then on Saturday, partly cloudy, windy, highs, low 50s. Easter Sunday, sun with increasing cloudiness. And the highs, 55 to 60. We expect rain Sunday night and into Monday. So we should bail out okay for the Easter weekend. Well, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to church anyway. That's true. I, although <laughs> I've heard in some states, you know, because I do weather in other states around the country, there are, they are allowing uh, church services, and I don't know how they're doing that. Well, uh, you, it's called faith in God, and uh, yeah, well, <laughs> it's not, I just heard a story this morning about a gentleman who was inducted. I forgot his name. He was inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame a few years back. Um, so him and his wife took off and they went to uh, New Orleans for Mardi Gras. And uh, after Mardi Gras, um, they left. They're driving home and they got to North Carolina and he started taking very sick. Uh, so they had to stop in North Carolina. They put him in intensive care. He was in intensive care for eight days and he just passed away. Um, well, not just, but recently passed away, 57 years old. Oh, John Prine just died last night. Uh, yeah, and, and I heard John about was that. Seven, 71 years old. He had a. Uh, you know, it, it seems like musicians who travel a lot and who greet crowds a lot and who are on crowds a lot, uh, they are taking a, a real hit. On, I'm telling you, uh, in this in this crisis, it's amazing how many uh, well-known, entrenched uh, uh, musicians um, uh, have passed from the coronavirus. It's it's absolutely astounding. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, as you know, all concerts have been canceled. Yeah. You know. Um, everything is just literally shut down the way it should be uh, until this whole thing, um, until the, quote, tidal wave passes over and everything begins to calm down. According to our governor, uh, he thinks we are plateauing uh, as we speak. So uh, he said that's a good idea, but he brings through a very good point. He said uh, that does not mean we're out of the woods in any way, shape or form. He said because the minute you let your guard down, the counts will again start going up and, um, you know, plateauing will again be climbing the mountain. So everybody has to be very, very diligent and uh, be careful. I don't know if you've been doing this, Marshall, but at seven o'clock in the evening, a lot of our neighbors, we've all been going outside and we've been uh, clapping, blowing horns, banging pans um, uh, to salute our first responders. I'm I'm asleep. I so. <laughs> oh, well, we've been I'll, doing that, I and it's that. really nice to see uh, to see everybody. Uh, you know, uh, salute them. I just uh, I just hope they know that this is going on uh, in many parts of the United States. Well, if they don't, the bears and the deer do. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. By, by the way, talking about that, the count is now up to twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Mm-hmm. Twenty-seven. What? At Pat's cabin. Oh, 27 mice? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think you're going to have to burn down that cabin and build you a, a sealed one. Uh, David, David texted me yesterday, and um, he said there are only four traps left. He said, and I'm not setting any, any new ones. Um, I said, great. And, uh, you know, I emailed him um, last night, and he emailed me back this morning. And he said, I could, I definitely could see why you're so disgusted. He said, but I assure you, he said, by the time the summer comes, he said, we will have your cabin pretty much mouse proof. He said, you can count on my word. I said, all right, fine. So he's aimed to do it. Yeah, he built his cabin. He bought a cabin on the other side of the lake uh, about six years ago. And it was really pretty run down. And uh, he was a professor in college. 
And one of the classes that he taught was woodworking. So, uh, you know, he's he's a carpenter and he does beautiful work. You should see his cabin. I mean, it's small, but inside and out, just impeccable. And he said to me, he said, Pat, I built my cab, I really redid my cabin from top to bottom. It took me five years. I did it by myself. He said, but my cabin is so tight. He said that we're lucky air could get into it. And it's five years to the date. And of course, he doesn't have that problem. And he said he'll uh, he'll try to do the same with mine. There you go. So there we go. Lucky to have a friend like him. So uh, that's it. He also sent me a clip this morning, and I thought I'd uh, bring it to people, um, um, refresh their memory. I'm sure they've seen it. He sent me a clip this morning, and I watched it, and I did laugh, from um, All in the Family with Archie. When Archie had to go into the hospital to get a, I think it was a hernia operation, and he was uh, he was laying in bed, and uh, the nurse approaches him, at least what he thinks is a nurse, and it turns out that she is the, a doctor and assisting his doctor. Not only does she have to give him an, an injection in the back, but now she has to shave him. Uh, it was just hysterical, <laughs> very hysterical. I don't know if you've ever seen that one, oh, yeah. but. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, very, 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 very funny. You know, if it wasn't for Archie Bunker and his uh, his face, his facial remarks and everything, I don't know if it would be as funny, uh, but it was funny. And it's nice to laugh. And, uh, you know, you have to just keep laughing, folks, and and, um, and hope that uh, hope. And I know we will. And we'll just get through this. Uh, this is what, week four, Marshall? Is this week four for us? Yes. Uh, we're entering week five. But, uh, you know, it, yesterday I made a mistake in an announcement on the air, and I felt so bad after it, I, I corrected it right away. Uh, mm -hmm. There's There was a um, Rite Aid in North Canaan. It was, it's a, I don't know why the corporate corporations did this. In the middle of a pandemic, uh, uh, Walgreens took over a, a Rite Aid, right? Okay. So in the middle of a pandemic, they, they're doing a stock switchover. They've got uh, people all over the place, and... Uh, and the word has it that uh, there were a couple of sick people, sick people that work that were working there, that self quarantined. Okay, because they just wanted to make sure that that they self quarantined. Yeah. But but instead of just shutting down the store when they heard that a couple of the employees self quarantined, instead of just shutting down the store, bringing in uh, and letting people know that hey, we're just doing this in precaution because you know you're our customers, we want to. Keep uh, they just kept the store open and told, and then they sh finally shut it down the day before yesterday for one night uh, and brought in a cleaning crew. But there's corporate America. What what a dumb thing to do in the middle of a pandemic to to be doing that. And then when you find out that a couple of your employees are sick and that they're self quarantining now, now that doesn't mean that they have it, but still they're self quarantining. So what you want to do in a small town that spreads, that news spreads, right? Uh, just put a sign on the door saying, "Hey, listen." We found out a couple of our employees were sick uh, during this changeover. We're also going to deep clean the store and be closed for a couple of days. Did they do that? No. Did I, did I no. call? Did I call them and and give them a chance to refute the story? Yes. You know what I got from them? Go ahead. Uh, no comment. We're just uh, deep cleaning the store and changing the stock over. No comment. What, what, that's, how stupid is that? They, they should. You know. Anyways, but this this, this whole this whole pandemic has brought about. And then, then you have other stores now, Le Bon's, on top of everything else that they're doing. They now have, the, you know, those temperature readers that they have at the airport? Yeah. They Now, whenever their staff comes in, every staff member has to get their temperature taken. And anybody who comes into the store, and they only allow 20 people at a time, has to get their temperature taken. If they've got a temperature, they can't get in. And if they don't want to get their temperature taken, uh, they're not going to be allowed in the store. Uh, a lot, some people are upset about that. I think that's smart. I think that's smart. You know, they're, they're trying to protect everybody. Well, it's smart. Um, when uh, last week when my doctor, um, my ex-doctor, wrote to me, he told me that uh, taking the temperature in no way, shape, or form is any kind of guarantee. No. Nope. He said, uh, he pretty much he called it hogwash. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah, but anybody that's but got it's at least a line of defense. That's right? exactly right. It's it's something. It's something uh, it, to protect people that are coming into these stores. It's something that you can do. Uh, anybody's got a fever, you're not going to be in there, so you won't give your fever to somebody else. So right. All right, Pat, we're out of time already. Yep. Yeah, okay. Well, 
everybody again, be safe. You know the drill. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning. We'll be here, Pat. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Uh, Pat began this morning in the Weather Center with a check on our tri-state forecast here on Robin Hood Radio.